So Aldi are selling whiskey that is being called one of the best in the world and it's being sold for less than 18 quid. Hello everyone and welcome back to Jedi Mantis Taste. It's been too long. Um, I've been very busy. I've lost a bit of weight. I don't know if you can see that, but I have. Uh, I've been very busy at work. Um, just not had time to do any videos. And I do apologize for that. Um, this is a special that I'm doing uh, based on recent news stories that have been coming out about Aldi selling a whiskey. Uh, that has been awarded a top award, a gold award, and is being touted as one of the best in the world. Uh, this is the whiskey, Glen Marnock. That there. Uh, it is a limited a limited release. Uh, it's a spare side, um, forty percent volume, and it is a non-age statement expression, which means it doesn't have the usual. 12 year old, 18 year old, etc. Um, but it's winning these awards. Um, looks a nice, you know, nice tube there, high quality look to it, um, good feel to it. Um, so, Glen Marnock. Let's have a look on the map and see where Glen Marnock is located. As you can see, it doesn't appear on the map. Why is that? Because it doesn't exist. There is no Glen Marnock distillery. Uh, in fact, there is no Glen Marnock. There is no Glen uh, called Marnock. Uh, it is not a location in Scotland. Glen Marnock is simply a brand name. It's a brand name that is owned by Aldi and was created in 2011. Uh, what we can see, based on the, the tube in the bottling, it is a product of Scotland. Um, being uh, distilled, matured and bottled in Scotland. Um, so it doesn't make itself. A distillery is behind the creation of this best in the world whiskey. Which distillery? No one knows for sure, uh, apart from Aldi, um, and they're keeping quiet. Many distilleries have been rumoured to be the creators. Uh, this ranges from uh, the Dalmore distillery in the Highlands uh, to Glendronach and Glen Moray and the Speyside regions, um, but nothing's been proven. Uh, I quite like that the distillery isn't known, it adds an air of mystery, so if it is a nice whiskey, there's that mystery about it that you can taste it, sit back, wonder where it might be. It then opens up your journey into the whiskey world to try and see if you can f discover for yourself what, what distillery it may come from. Um, so if you like it, you might want to then go out and try different whiskies from the from the specific uh, distilleries in that region and see if you can find something similar that you like just as much obviously 18 pound just keep buying it at Aldi <laughs> if it's nice um, so how did a mysteriously distilled budget brand um, whiskey manage to win this coveted award um, well, we have to remember that only whiskies that have entered into the competition are considered. So not, and not every qualifying whiskey is entered. So there's an awful lot of potential 
better whiskies out there. Um, likewise, it won an award in a particular competition and there are many competitions out there with many different judges and many different winners of the same category in each different competition. Um, so when you look at the big picture, it's won an award. Uh, the judging itself is usually a blind taste test, uh, with judges taking into account such things as the age of the whiskey, the cost of the whiskey, uh, among other things. Uh, so the fact that it's Aldi's whiskey has no impact on its score. It's blind taste test, they don't know that what they're tasting is Aldi's, there's no prejudice to it. Um, so ultimately, I think the big commotion about the fact it won this award is simply comes down to the fact that it's Aldi's own brand uh, that won it. Uh, and it's not expected that a, a discount supermarket like Aldi would be winning these awards. Um, However, it does it does seem that that is changing because we've we've had award-winning gins, wines, other whiskies. Uh, the Highland Black, I believe, eight-year-old won um, a silver. So it is becoming more the norm that discount supermarkets, in particular Aldi, are getting access to these award-winning products. Um, and as I said, the cost of the of the product often comes into play so if they're selling it cheaper that is going to go for, um, count towards them for their points um, so and also what we have to remember is it's not Aldi making the whiskey or the gin or the wine it's a distillery um, that is potentially a big player in the whiskey world that is making this whiskey so when you look at that and you find that they're winning an award it's not that surprising that a big name potentially Dalmore, potentially Glendronic, potentially Glenmorey, anyone else that you want to care about who's big named uh, a big name in the whiskey industry not surprising that they're going to win an award especially if their their whiskey is being sold so cheap at 18 pounds 17.49 to be precise um, that's not that surprising so that being said, there's not a lot more I can really say about it. Um, it doesn't have an age. It doesn't have any history to the distillery because it, no one knows the distillery. So let's just open the bottle and have a look at it. So here we go. It's it's your typical whiskey whiskey bottle and tube, um, but it is a high quality. It's not flimsy. It's it's sturdy. Um, Inside, typical shape bottle, uh, reminiscent of something like a, a, a Dalmore, uh, not a Dalmore, a, ba a Bormore, Bormore whiskey. Um, have that sort of shape bottle to them, nice and slim and dignified look to them. Um, very, again, you can see the branding. It's it's simple, it's simplistic. Uh, it's got Glen Glen Marnock. What it is, limited release, um, not just detracting from what it is very reminiscent of your um, your big names this is how they label they have a simple label nothing nothing flashy tells you what you need to know an exceptional spearside whiskey featuring rich oak with a butterscotch nose a spiced bread citrus palette with a lingering toast and marmalade finish. So that's telling us what we are expecting. I've now got to try and get into the damn thing, so the seal. I normally pre-tear these and I didn't. So, and what I like to say, it has got that cork. Looking at the bottle, nice color to it. We'll pour a bit out. The old Glen Cairn glass. It's quite aromatic, I'm already smelling that. But we're going to add a little drop of water just to bring it down. And we only need a little because it's 40%, so we only want to bring it down to around 35, uh, 30 to 35. Um, give it a swallow around so that the whiskey opens up and dive in. 
can definitely smell the orc. It smells nice. It It's an attractive smell. Getting the dried fruit in there. Not really picking up on the butterscotch. Overpowering on the orc. Not in a bad way. But that's the that's the dominant smell there, the orc. Smells a bit like a bourbon because of that. Looking at the colour, we've got that golden um, slight orange hue to it. Um, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. There's quite a rich taste to that. The spices are there. They catch on the back of the throat. Again, not in a bad way. Even with the water, it's quite a quite a thick liquid quite a compact taste very warming can pick up those citrus notes on the back of it citrus and spice being the, the predominant things there wouldn't wouldn't identify it as spiced bread as they do on the on the bottle but definitely spice. And it is quite a long finish. It's it lingering around um, a decent length of time. Still got the, the, the kick of the spice there. Probably could identify the marmalade, that tang to it as it's as it's sitting in the mouth after you've swallowed. Um quite pleasant. Quite pleasant drink. I'm gonna have a little bit without the water, see how it differs. A lot silkier uh, in texture. The flavours being compacted give it less of a kick. With the water, it opens the flavours up, and the individual flavours can give you that that spice kick. Um, without the water, that's going down very very nicely. very very rich in flavor um, it's it's nice it is nice um, for 1749 yeah I can understand why this is won an award not not overpowering in alcohol um, fairly smooth Smooth and rich is, is a nice combination because the richness gives you that flavour. makes you feel like you're drinking something um, worth, or certainly worth a lot more than £18. Um, but the smoothness means it is drinkable. Um, so yes, that's that's a nice whiskey. Um, 1749 Aldi Supermarket, Glen Marnock. Um, limited release, so I don't know how long it's going to be in stores. Um, I would imagine with the popularity it's received, it, it, um, 
it may be hard to find over the coming weeks if you are wanting to go out and try it um, comment down below if you've tried it uh, what you thought of it would you have given it the gold um, but yeah that's well worth 1749 I'd have I'd have not complained if I'd have paid twice that for what it tastes like that is it's spot on spot on whiskey from Aldi's Glen Marnock brand um, and as I say the mystery of who actually made it is 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 only a positive I think that you want to now go out and say I wonder if it tastes like this one and it's it's good so that has been my review of Aldi's best in the world Glen Marnock Speyside um, thank you for joining me. Um, wait, wait a minute. Stop everything. Um, Glen Marnock Aldi do not just sell Glen Marnock Spearside. Um, they also sell a Highland whiskey under the Glen Marnock brand, uh, and I just so happen to have one. Uh, now I was going to do two videos, um, but after finding out that there is no real information out there to pass on to you, um, it doesn't really have its own distillery, well, it does have its own distillery but no one knows anything about it, um, I figured I would just do the two in one video, give you a twofer. Um, so, Glen Marnock limited release, again it's, an, it's a non-age statement expression as they like to call it. It's a Highland one. So this one would more than likely be from a different distillery. So this is the one that would potentially be from the Dalmore distillery. And looking at the bottle, looking at the colour that's in there, I'm not convinced that that would be a Dalmore. It's slightly too yellow for Dalmore. My, my, um, Experience with Dalmore is an is a lot more of a ruby hue to their whiskey, and that doesn't really hold that. So I'm not convinced that Dalmore would be the um, the distillery behind this particular one. They have released other um, Glen Marnock whiskies. There's been uh, age statement ones, and I believe Dalmore have actually been. Uh, in partnership with Aldi for previous uh, whiskies, but I'm not sure on this one. So we're going to give this one a go. This one again is 40% volume, um, smooth and elegant Highland whiskey featuring blood orange and cream sponge on the nose, buttery with sweet soft fruit flavour and a delicate spice finish. This one as well the blue label um, this was the one that the um, checkout operator I believe he was actually one of the management uh, he specifically said that the blue label one was nicer than the purple the spare side so counterintuitive in that it was the purple that won the award not the blue but he said it was very fruity and really nice so we're going to give this one a go. Obviously, my Glencairn glass has got spare side in. So I've got a second. So we've got no contamination. We're going to pour a little bit out. Quite a tough cork in there, quite solid. Um, nice pop to it. Nice glug as we pour it out. Ooh, definitely, immediately looks a bit thinner. Thinner texture to it. Uh, we are going to Add a little bit of water. Again, we don't need a lot because we're just bringing it down just 5% or so. Swirl it round. Very different smell. Smelling that cinnamon. Couldn't say I smell the cream, but I don't really know what cream smells like. Not a distinctive orange. Definitely fruity. 
fruity, spicy. It smells fairly delicate. As you can see, fairly gold, fairly light gold in colour, lighter than the spare side, I would say. Um, which again, to me, that's not Dalmore's signature. They can hide the distillery all they want, but distilleries usually have some sort of identifying signature to their whiskies, and that doesn't that doesn't scream Dalmore to me, definitely not. Um, I believe Feta Cairn is another one that has been um, rumoured. That one's very watery, very thin. Delicate is right, it's very, very lightly flavoured. Very gentle. The slightest, slightest along the top of the top front of the tongue is the the only only place I'm sensing the spice um, so delicate is definitely the way to describe this one gentle um, inoffensive a bit of a shy whiskey this one um, doesn't taste strong um, potentially dangerous if you were just knocking it back. It's still 40% even though it doesn't taste like a 40%. Oh, it's very short finish on this one as opposed to the long of the spare side. Not much there. Um, not really getting any fruit. Not in taste or finish just slightly on the nose that one's a little disappointing and only in terms of trying the spare side and having that that punch of flavor the kick of the spice um, this one I was expecting more based on what the spare sides uh, offered we're going to try it without the water and see if that provides a different experience. So you can see straight away it is it is a lot more watery than the than the spare side. The spare side very silky, very thick. Um, this one very thin, very free flowing. Very gentle on the nose. Better without the water. Definitely um, getting a bit of the flavour there. Picking up a bit more fruitiness without the water. Bit more the 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 spice kick. Spice burn, moving along the tongue, along the back of the lips now, um, round to the side of the mouth, um, but still not, still not um, strong. Still quite a, quite a vacant finish to it. Um, very gentle, very delicate. I wouldn't have said buttery. If it, 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 they mentioned on the label and buttery um, taste to it, I, I would have said buttery would have been a thicker taste. This is very thin. Um, it's not bad. It's just it's not as nice as the spare side. The spare side for me. Spare sides are better a better whiskey. Um, so out of out of the two, we have the spare side, which is the one that won the gold award, 
and the Highland, which is just from the same brand, but not the same distillery. And I would say that the distiller, a little bit more accomplished in the spare side than what the, uh, the Highland one is. Um, it's not bad, the Highland, not bad. Um, fairly easy to drink because there's not much to it. But if you like a gentle whiskey, that would be the one for you. Um, a lot, a lot punchier, the flavour of the, the spare side. But I would say definitely understandable why the, the spare side won the gold award. Uh, for the price that it is um, and the quality that it seems to be, that's a top pick. Um, so yes, that's been the review. Uh, we've done two for one. Um, ultimately deciding with the uh, competition pickers, not that they would be in the same category, obviously one being Highland, one being Spearside, completely different regions of Scotland. Um, Spearside uh, being, being named by, by many as being the, the, the heart of, of whiskey land. Um, so I would, if I had to, if I had to drink one, gun to my head, gun to my balls, I would go for the Spearside every time out of them. Um, that's that's the one I would pick. So if you have £17.49 and you're deciding between the two, I would strongly recommend the spare side. Uh, that has been my review. As I say, comment down below if you've tried either. There is a third. I didn't buy that one because the third one is an eye layer. Um, so it is a peated expression. And I'm not the biggest fan of peated, so I didn't go for that one. Um, maybe in the future, if it's still on the shelf, I may try it. 17.49 is not too much to to put onto a whiskey that I potentially wouldn't appreciate as fully as other whiskies. So maybe down the line that will appear on the channel. But for now, I've been Jedi Mantis. Uh, thank you for watching. I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. Um, I'm still very busy uh, in my outside life. Um, still trying to lose a few more pounds, um, build a bit more muscle. Uh, still very busy at work. I've just um, moved stores. Um, as, as I've said before, I work in retail. I have moved stores, so that is going to be a, a, a task for me. Um, so I don't know when the next video will be out, but hopefully it won't be as long a time between the, this and the next video. Uh, so thank you for watching. I will see you next time. And like the video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Bye.